class, hello, and welcome to this marine biology session on oceanography. I will be your tutor, Big Owl. Today we are going to look at ocean structure, benthos, ocean zones. First, let's look at the ocean structure. The oceans mostly have a common structure, which is created by common physical phenomena, mainly from sediment from various sources and tectonic movement. The structure of the oceans, starting with the continents, usually begins with a continental shelf, continues to the continental slope, that's a steep descent into the ocean, until reaching the abyssal plain, a topographic, the beginning of the seabed, and its main area. The border between the abyssal plain and the continental slope is called the continental rise. It usually has a more gradual descent, which is caused by sediment cascading down the continental slope. The mid-ocean ridge is a mountainous rise through the middle of all of the world's oceans, between the continents. Characteristically, a rift runs along the edge of this ridge. Along tectonic plate edges, there are commonly oceanic trenches, which are deep valleys, shaped by the mantle circulation movement from the mid-ocean mountain ridge to the oceanic trench. Ocean trenches are the deepest areas of the ocean. They are also known as submarine valleys. An ocean trench is a long, deep depression in the ocean floor, similar to deep chasms on dry land. Some trenches are near continental shelves. Others are found near groups of volcanic islands, often called volcanic arcs. The island nations of Japan and the Philippines and the Aleutians are instances of volcanic arcs. So where does the continental shelf end and the continental slope begin? The continental shelf is a broad expanse of ocean bottom sloping gently and seaward from the shoreline to the shelf slope break at a depth of 100 to 200 meters. Okay, what about ocean trenches? How are they formed? Ocean trenches can be formed when the tectonic plates slip underneath each other between continental crust and oceanic crust, subduction. The long sequence of Peru-Chile trenches off the west coast of South America is formed by the oceanic crust of the Nazca Plate subducting beneath the continental crust of the South American Plate. Ocean trenches can also be formed when two plates carrying oceanic crust meet, although these are rarer. In the South Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench is formed as the massive Pacific Plate subducts beneath the Philippine Plate. Does anything live in this area of the ocean? That's a good question. Animals that live in ocean trenches have to survive a habitat of intense pressure. Most of the organisms collected from the Challenger Deep have been microscopic. The organisms, Orphoraminifera, are similar to algae or slime molds. Scientists believe the foraminifera they discovered at the bottom of the Challenger Deep are similar to Earth's earliest life forms. We'll now move on to looking at benthos. Benthos is the name for the community of organisms which live on, in, or near the seabed, in the area known as the benthic zone. Benthos live in or near marine sedimentary locations, from tidal pools along the foreshore, to the continental shelf, and down to the abyssal depths. The benthic zone is the ecological area on, in, or directly above the seabed, which includes the sediment surface and some subsurface layers. Benthos generally lives in close association with the substrate bottom, and numerous such organisms are permanently attached to the bottom. The benthic boundary layer, the superficial layer of soil which lines the given mass of water, is an integral part of the benthic zone, greatly influencing the biological activity which takes place there. Contact soil layers include bay mud, coral, sand bottoms, rocky outcrops. Finally, We'll look at ocean zones. Within the world's oceans, there are many diverse marine habitats. Different marine life may live in various ocean zones. Two major zones include pelagic zone, considered the open ocean, benthic zone, which is the ocean bottom. I know that some animals live in different areas of the ocean according to the amount of light there. Do these areas have names? Yes, the ocean is also divided into zones according to how much sunlight the area receives. These are the aphotic zone, which has no light, the dysphotic zone, where there is just a small amount of light, the euphotic zone, which receives enough light to permit photosynthesis. Will an animal always stay in the same zone? Not necessarily. Some animals, like sea turtles, whales and fish, may occupy several zones throughout their lives or in different times of the year. 
Other animals, like sessile barnacles, may stay in one zone for the majority of their lives. So, to summarize, today we have looked at ocean structures and where the continental shelf ends and the continental slope begins. Ocean trenches, benthos, ocean zones. Goodbye class and good luck.